Hello everyone and welcome back to Wolfware Programming. Today I want to talk to you a little bit more about the PinePhone Pro and this time instead of showing off uh, KDE Plasma Mobile we're going to take a look at Fosh and this is going to be Fosh on Manjaro Dev and some of the things that I wanted to show off on this device um, about Fosh is well, it's a nicer operating system, meaning it's a little it has fewer bugs. It has fewer features, but it also has fewer bugs than KDE Plasma. So in general, for for simple things, it's a little bit easier to use. Some updates on the PinePhone Pro. The uh, PinePhone has now got Suspend to work, and this only worked for me in the develop branch of Manjaro. So if you go and flash Manjaro from the uh, stable branch, you're not going to get uh, suspend and so your battery will only last a little while so I've tested this and left it on running all day uh, and it, it will last all day um, probably probably into two days I've got a, a little bit of a larger battery I inserted in there uh, I bought off of Amazon but um but yeah so suspend now works so it's actually a very very usable tablet and here I've got the default password set up and this is flashed to the internal EMMC. So another really important update on the PinePhone Pro is that the uh, Toe Boot has now been updated to allow uh, for some additional flashing features on the PinePhone. So now if you, when you're booting up the PinePhone, if you hold the volume up key, you can flash the... Uh, the internal eMMC memory. You hook it up to a computer and it's just recognized like a USB flash drive. If you boot it up holding the down arrow key, it will boot from SD card instead of the internal memory. So that way you can have one operating system on the internal memory and then another operating system on your SD card for when you're distro hopping, trying out different UIs, etc, etc. So that's great stuff. Makes flashing it much easier. Before you try to flash, flash Fosh, I definitely suggest installing the new Toe Boot. So you can uh, Google Toe Boot, it'll bring you to the GitHub, look for the PinePhone release. Um, I think I got it from a, a PR a while back, but uh, it has been merged into mainline. mainline. Okay, so here we got the, the Fosh interface. It's super, super smooth. Um, you know, like like the like the Pine Phone is much better than the original, original original Pine Phone. So I do love, I, I I really do love Firefox. I wish it supported PWAs, um, progressive web apps. I think they took that out. That would have uh, made things really cool. But it's still pretty nice. Like it's a, it's a nice web browser, and a, a lot of things work here. A lot of things work here. So you see Hacker News is very, very, very smooth. And just like the other video, we also have some MP3 players. Um, we've got Elisa, which is actually a KDE app. It takes a little while to load the first time around. So if you're just starting it up, it'll actually take a, a few minutes. And while that's loading, we can also take a look at another one. And so this is Lollipop, which is a no map. And let's see, I think I have a playlist of the popular tracks. I haven't used. It's not it's not the most intuitive UI. Like it takes a minute to kind of figure out what you're doing with it. Let's see if the other one's working yet. If it's loaded. Nothing's playing. Let's take a look at tracks. I like this MP3 player a little more. So this this will scan your music folder. So I've got a F stab mounted with my SD card. So now when I'm switching operating systems, even from the internal memory, all my stuff is still there. I just have to edit fstab after every single reinstallation. So we'll try a open source song here. So some people were asking about uh, phone calls and do they work? And the answer is yes. <laughs> um, it's a little bit slow. Yes, they work. However, the audio quality is not there yet, so you can't really understand very much. I think there's some echo going on. It's all software issues. I did notice that USB-C headphones work. I just bought one for my OnePlus 6, and that worked fine. Also, regular, regular headphones will work fine, of course, because it has a headphone jack.
So that works pretty good. Comes with chess, a couple other things. So here's the maps that I, I I'm made. It's really just a bash script with an icon. I can link to the source if anyone wants it. So you want to be able to SSH into your phone. And so I've got two uh, two icons here, one for starting SSH and one for stopping SSH. If you've got SSH, an SSH server running on your phone, you don't want it running all the time when you're uh, you know when you're on mobile network because you just um, you don't you don't want that. Uh, someone's going to try to hack your phone. I mean, there's always SSH bots, especially if you're running on port 22, knocking every single IP address into existence. If it's IP6, maybe, you know, harder to find you, but IP4, yeah, someone's going to be, someone's going to try. Anyway, so you can click start SSH and it opens up a terminal. As for the password, it's still default. Command exited, nothing flashy, but it works. And now we can go into, uh, our computer here, which uh, I'm going to enter my password off screen. Okay, so we've got a terminal here. We can go ahead and SSH. I don't know if you can see it. So we're going to Manjaro and we can enter 123456, the default password. And bam, we're in the phone. Isn't that awesome? I love that about Linux phones. So yeah, you can uh, see all the stuff there. So Fosh is great. Um, th there's some things I don't like about Fosh. Like I, I can't seem to um, open up an app and then leave it alone. Like if I just want to kind of leave it open, but leave it open but not close it out. I'm not really sure how to do that. Um, I like that the keyboard can go in and out whenever you want. It's it's a perfectly usable UI. I like it. Megapixel still doesn't work. Um, but yeah, this is a it's, it's 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 a fun little mp3 player. I've tried Cody running on this thing. Um, that's all right, see we got VLC somehow gets installed here. But um it's a good it's a good little UI. Not a whole lot else to say. I mean it's very similar to Fosh on your Find Phone 1, it just runs a lot smoother. So not completely smooth. There's like a little bit of lag there. Totally usable though. So hopefully in a couple months this thing is going to be daily driver ready. We got suspend working, so now the battery is not garbage. And I think it was it took way longer than that to get suspend working on the Pine Phone One. I'm not I'm not exactly sure. I got the Pine Phone One kind of late, but um, I don't remember the battery lasting as long as this one does. So it, it basically lasts all day. So that's all I got for you guys. I just wanted to you know give you a few updates that the uh, suspend is now working. Um, flashing to EMC is now much easier to do with the new Tobu edition. Uh, you've probably seen some of the Pine64 devs talk about it and if you're hanging out in their Discord or their Matrix chats. But uh, those are the two big things. Now you can switch operating systems very quickly, very easily. That was the most annoying thing when you first got the Pine Phone Pro. Sorry, this is a one plus six camera running on Lineage OS, so <laughs> kind of fuzzy. Let me know in the comments if you guys got any questions. I've answered some questions on my other review. Um, I think I might uh, take, I don't know if I, I've got, I don't have any Pine Phone specific work I'm building right now. I noticed someone's got a PR request to get uh, Flutter apps working. Right now I compiled some Flutter apps on the Pine Phone. I have one video on my channel where it shows it running, but there's a problem when you're inputting text onto the phone it comes out backwards. Basically, all the letters are prepended instead of appended. So if you type hello, it spells olel or whatever. So, but Flutter apps, I think, would be really nice. You, we've, there's already a ton of free open source Flutter apps that would really make the eco ecosystem really nicely. So someone had a PR. I might try just recompiling the whole Flutter engine and then uh, showing all those apps running on the Pine phone if I get a few, you know, a few hours to do that. Yeah, so that's it, everyone. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and have a great day.